Welcome back to DreamHack Masters Winter. Godsent versus Mouseport is going to be our first semi-final of the day. And Mouseport are looking on fire and Godsent, well, they're ready to take down another favorite. But are you guys ready? I very much hope so, as I have a buff question for you from Sports Buff to make sure that extension is alive and kicking. Because that was very smooth production. I was yeah. very, very impressed. Okay, which of these teams placed highest at the DreamHack Masters Spring 2020 Europe Tournament? Was it A, Vitality, B, Astralis, that was my Danish really needs some work, C, Phase, or D, Heroic? You know what to do. Click the button for the right answer. Do you know the answer? It's D, right? I know the answer, but I can't spoil it. It's not D. Oh, it's not D. It's not D, but I like the confidence. It was a very good red herring. I should have lied to everyone and pretended that I didn't you know. You helped everyone out. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You did help. We, we processed the elimination. It's like phoning a friend and who wants to be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully someone's not calling <laughs> the audience to get the answer. Let's remind ourselves of the bracket so we can see how a potential final could line up. So in our first semi-final, Godsent versus Mouse, the winner will play either Astralis or Furia. This was not a lucky run to semi-finals for Godsent. They lost versus Mouse, but they've taken down Heroic. They beat Astralis in their opening match. If you wanted to call it a fluke, it had to end there. They beat Astralis. That was maybe, who knows if that happens again. But the rest of the teams they've taken down, they've just been tallying them up like the Grim Reaper meme here. And Godsent now have earned their way into playoffs. I think that at the beginning of the event, if I told you a team was going to get a best of three victory over Astralis, Heroic, and take a map off Mouse Sports, I don't believe you'd ever put Godsent's label on it. So this is by no means a fluke. Uh, this is a very deep run from a team who has just made a roster change. This can only mean promising things for Godsent, but does it end today? Because we've seen Mouse Sports look better and better and better. And I think maybe they have their hands full. We do know Mouse Sports took them last time. Well, do you believe in God? Sent, or are you a mouse person? Well, we'd love to know. Use the hashtags that are coming up on screen right now and have your vote in Twitch chat. Let us know who you think is going to take this one. Hashtag God or hashtag mouse. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I'm so glad God sent it here. All right, let's Make actually right talk decision. about you won't be judged. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, I mean, you may have to pay penance if your team doesn't win. God sent all the breakthrough team of the event so far. And it's a miracle, really, because they played one match of the full showdown once Emir joined and they went out straight away, Mouse actually eliminated them there. And now, as we've just mentioned, they've made this like miracle run. Like, And I'm just wondering, is this all down to Emmy? Well, you know the, the team was already really strong with four and Crystal just had abysmal stats. I mean, even watching his games, it just, I think if Kadian put it best, like the way he was using himself was just zero confidence, like running into sites. And we see that kind of similar game style from Kerrigan where he had low stats as well, except Kerrigan was being a bit smarter, getting kills, and now is actually sometimes top fragging. Crystal just never put himself in position to win a duel, basically, and was always getting caught off guard for information. So he had the right, right idea. And I think Emmy is shown that he's better stats-wise. Not incredible step up, of course. There's nothing to prove that was ever going to happen, but was one of the better performers versus Astralis. Definitely makes smarter plays every round and gives himself the respect to actually try to make rounds happen for himself as well. Tell me about Zen. Oh, yeah, the, Zen is a dude who just, like, he is really good. I think Maniac mentioned to me that he feels like Zen maybe falls off versus some better opponents, but I think he's looked at as a player in, in, in some of these games, when, from what I've seen, he just makes very few mistakes. He just is really very clean CS, and I think he always impresses. So this might be a really big test in that regard because it is tier one competition, but I have huge promise for Zen. What excites you about God Sense Corny? Uh, the fact that they're doing this so quickly with a new fifth piece, right? You talked on it. That solid four was already in place. Um, they're the Dane Slayers at the moment, right? Astralis, North, Heroic. All three best of three wins. They were a little bit stretched thin, right? We don't have any clear two zeros like what we got from Gambit on their Miracle Rim because you said this was a bit of a breakout from Godsent and it was the Godsent Gambit storyline, right? These were the two challengers in this realm of competition. Now Godsent taking it one step further. So what excites me is that this is new. Godsent, this is something fresh and it's not every day that you see a fresh five make this deep of a run in a pretty stacked event. And I, I've been talking about Emmy a lot because he's been a bit of a running theme on the desk and I've had to basically like have quite a lot of humble pie when I've, I've sort of said in the beginning of this event that I wasn't sure that 
Emmy was going to make a huge difference. Clearly, I was absolutely wrong. Well, I, think I it's accept a reasonable, that. It's a reasonable opinion, right? It's just that I think for us in particular, when we watched them, we casted them win their first tournament. We could see firsthand that Emmy had a lot to offer. And he was an older player. He had was coaching for a while. So there's like red flags almost in that sense. But, you know, we just saw with the eye test alone that, you know, Emmy is definitely a very smart guy. And um, yeah, there's not a lot of stats that prove that this would have been a good roster move. So it's not that you had a bad opinion. It's like a very reasonable opinion. But you're still wrong. And that is why <laughs> I am not an analyst and I'm always happy to be wrong. But right now, I'm very glad that we're actually going to have an interview from Emmy himself because we've spoken about the man enough. Let's hear him actually say something. Congrats to our team for really nice success uh, by winning against Hurt. It was a really, really hard match. On Vertigo, we had a really bad city side and uh, we didn't play Vertigo that much, honestly, on practice. But we, all, we, we uh, tried to come back on this side and then there was a round on 14-14 where it was my fault that I didn't hold the flank uh, how I was supposed to and uh, we just lost the round and we lost the map. I know it's my mistake, but I, I can't leave in the past because we're still in the game. I just need to forget it and keep keep on playing, you know. He spots that he can peek on his teammate's contact, and here it comes through. Farley with two, Madden with the other, and Farley just tearing them to shreds. Four kills, making it look easy. The matchup against Mouse Spurs is probably the toughest for us. At this moment, they have really, really good individuals and they have an amazing guy, Jell in Carrigan, and he's doing everything for the team and, and their team. And I know it's going to be really hard, but uh, we are we are really confident after this couple of big wins that we have that we had right now, and we're just going to give everything we have to, in order to to go to the finals tomorrow. Well, hopefully they'll keep that confidence going to the server because that was the downfall of Gambit yesterday when they had the right ideas and for some reason, instead of continuing with what worked, they decided to go back to what they thought worked against other teams in the past that just didn't work against Astralis. But confidence will be so key because Mousesports have beaten them the last two times, although the last time they met, uh, Godsent is actually win on you. I think the confidence will be there. I think the resilience will be there a little bit more versus a Gambit who are just kind of like, oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. Godsent have just earned their stripes. They've taken enough losses. Like they're slowly grinding. Like they, they're overdue for a breakout performance from what we've seen in recent times. Um, whereas Gambit's just like meteoric rise. Like, you know what I mean? That's actually going to make you quite a fragile team because the, like when when you actually started seeing it become real, if that's the first time you have can't, can't fall back on recent you know comeback performance or anything, everything's been too easy. That's when things can get very shaky. And a team like Mouse as well, they're not going to underestimate Godsend, even though they've played them before, because they themselves have only just got out of playing terribly, as Chris J said in his pre-match interview yesterday. So I don't think that Mouse are going to come into this one unprepared at all. I mean, there's two recent best of threes between these teams, and there was a very stark improvement from Godsend in between that time. And then in the back of Mouse Sports' mind, they also have to remember that, well, two other Titans from Denmark fell at the hands of Godsend. So no, they should not be writing them off. They absolutely have to prepare for Godsend because Godsend also are playing with nothing to lose. You know, um, like you said, G Gambit kind of skyrocketed in. It was the first time they played Astralis and the first time they'd had a lead over Astralis. Um, these victories from Godsent have been far grittier. Mm -hmm. And I think that builds character. Now, the, the video actually does get kind of interesting because Godsent play all maps. They just, and last time, of course, it was, you know, the standard overpass dust you out. But there's still a chance that Godsent could maybe adjust to play a team like Mouseports. And the other thing is that when we look at their recent head-to-head, -head, um, Train was a map that uh, is so good because of players like Frozen and Robs on the map, um, but and it became like a, a loss. But we had uh, yesterday, Godsent beat Heroic on Train, so maybe the confidence is coming up there if we want to look at the odds that they maybe could come back on this game. Well, I'll give you the uh, what happened last time. So Nuke was 16-13 to Godsend, then Inferno 16-9 to Mouse, and Train was 16-8. Yeah. So as you're saying, they're literally powering up with every series they have, but then so are Mouse. Like, Carrigan 2.0 is so refreshing to see. He's taking a much more active 
approach to to getting kills and making space for his team. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I'm kind of interested in, in how you would describe Master's style because last year they were that, that aggressive team who were looking to snowball you, playing quite loosely, trying to take you by surprise. Yeah. Do you feel like it's more of the same or is there a different edge to it now? The reason I asked Kerrigan that question in the interview is because I had trouble kind of defining where they were because in some rounds they played so slow. I mean, they would just really wait the time out, work the map slowly, sometimes lose, sometimes win. And then sometimes, you know, Kerrigan would be teleporting into the middle of the bomb site. <laughs> like we'd be, you know, spectating a default and suddenly Kerrigan's like, I'm flanking heaven. You know what I mean? It's like, how, how is he doing that? And then that's what Kerrigan called it, you know, structured chaos or, or whatever the term it was that he uses because he has two modes and he calls whatever is best at the time, which makes it a very scary team to prepare for, right? You can't know what to expect. They don't scale in any readable sense. They just go off of how they feel at that round. If I had to describe them, I would use the term well-rounded. Um, just because they have all these different gears of aggression. They have everybody in terms of form stepping up. Uh, players who have talents across all the weapons with pistols. Like, it's, there's, it's just really hard to pinpoint a weakness for mouse sports. Even their mouse, uh, excuse me, even their map pool is pretty incredible. So, they're just, they're, they're the whole package at the moment. And all they have to do now is prove that they can get into the finals and then actually chip away off of either Astralis or uh, Furia. They do have a sick strong mouse pool, you're right. Yeah. We're gonna hear from Chris J now and I'm interested to hear whether he's going to talk about them playing terribly in the past or how they're on fire right now. When you win, it's pretty good, yeah. Turned around, now it's time to Two keys over on Ark, on mid, got close, dropped with a triple! Both on Nuke and Inferno, there were moments where we felt like we were like completely in control of the map. Then also moments where it felt like it was kind of slipping away or they were at least fighting back really hard. I think like on Inferno, we were leading 5-0 or maybe even 6-0 and then they like uh, came back to I believe it was 6-6 six, six. you know they had a, a long winning streak so you know we had to refocus really hard to get back into the game can't quite catch the third but Frozen runs wildly in with the MP9 and he will get a trio of frag we played Godsend in the group stage. They've been playing, uh, I think, better than everyone would have expected uh, so fast after getting a new Gangnam leader. I feel like people also don't really rate Emmy that high. I was expecting myself and I think other people as well that he wasn't going to do much better than Crystal. So honestly I didn't have much uh, hopes for Godsend but uh, the last few matches they played they really proved me wrong at least. It's not going to be easy playing against them that's for sure. Oh yeah, this is gonna be some solid semi-final counter-strike and we've got to get into the map veto straight away. So Mouse are gonna ban overpass, that's quite clear. Godsend used to ban Mirage, they tend to ban Dust 2 these days. So there we go, that's as expected. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if this is exactly the same veto launders. Yeah, it could be and it'd be fine. So instead, uh, I think we're going to not... Wow, this is funny. Like, I think God's God sent maybe they... Oh, they're going to leave Inferno. Wow, okay. Ooh. So it's Mouse Force to take it in a new direction to challenge their Mirage, yep. which is something new. Of course, Inferno came first last time. Uh, Nuke is a map that uh, God sent have a five map win streak on, including Astralis, including Heroic, including North, including like everybody, basically. They've taken names on these maps. So C9. things get interesting here in the sense that God sent could potentially be expected to win Nuke, which is amazing. And then also, we don't know what to expect on Mirage. Well, Twitch chat are expecting a mouse sports win. God sent 19%. We'll get our predictions after the break because when we come back, the semi final is going to be kicking off with Nuke. this all-important semi-final. Maus have proved that their recent performance is not a fluke and Godson are on the rise. But will this be a heavenly result for them? We're gonna find out in two or three maps. And the first of those maps 
is going to be Nuke. And gentlemen, I didn't get the opportunity to get your predictions before we uh, headed to a break. So, it's crunch time. 2 old mouse. 2 old mouse. 2 old mouse. Although, I ain't taking it back. There's no button today. Yep. I'm mouse all the way. Mouse all the way. There is definitely a chance How brave that of you, Frankie. Uh, this first one goes the way of Godsent, though. Mohan, you just touched on it. The five win streak, big victories for Godsent recently, including one versus Mouse Sports. Also, Astralis and Heroic. We're talking teams that have defined success on Nuke. And Godsent take wins off them. Godsent waste no time. They're gonna immediately challenge out from Hut, Chris J, and Kerrigan, able to deliver some headshots. What's up, boys? Not so crisp <laughs> until Rops hits from Hut. A rapid ramp flank to get Mouse Sports the pistol. Mouse Sports' this nuke has been terrifying. This should be actually one of the best nuke matches of the tournament because, again, of Godsend's winning spree recently, but just how good Mouse Sports appear to have gotten on Nuke and how comfortable and how versatile they are. I really feel like even though Godsend brought this to 16-13 last time, it's going to be even harder now as opposed to easier. But they have the opportunity to bring in a game plan themselves and for Emmy to show what he can do to improve their odds. Frozen finds the first one. They've spotted Emmy on the Red Cross. He's going to die to the scout of Chris J. And we're going to just watch these pistols fizzle out. I've got a lot of my attention focused on the three mass special. His multi kills behind the A bomb site have been looking incredible. He, as an individual, is starting to heat hit peak form alongside Frozen. That three man wombo combo of ROPS, Frozen, and BMAS is the future of Mouse Sports. And they have some of the best supportive players around them to aid in their development. I haven't looked at the stats, and maybe Elia can help out with this, but I really think that Frozen has been the most consistent performer in all of their series so far at Masters. I mean, it's probably close between him and Rops, but uh, it, Frozen has just been quietly owning on all sides, CT sides. It's been very versatile, T side, CT side on each map. And um, we don't have train in this veto, which was the interesting one, because I got left to the end last time. I thought Godsend after the victory last night would want to take it to train, but uh, they have a, they, they struggled to close out the map versus Heroic, so maybe that's why they wanted to um, avoid it, where it got to a weird situation. Well, 2-0 is done. Off to the guns already. Matt, early tag here in mini by a saved scout by Christopher Joseph. Dingleheimer Schmidt. <laughs> Chrysler Jaguar. Okay. <laughs> you win this one. And uh, not sure who's going to win this round. Not yet, because we've had an early cool-off to Godsent. The squeaky door was blown off its hinges immediately. A little bit of damage comes versus Madden, and suddenly things cool off. Christmas jingle bells. <laughs> I've never done this with the Christmas name. It's actually quite fun. Oh, you've got all day. All right. That's his default. Got to offer. Smoke to mini. Deco looking to prod. This is to punish the top hut play. You only put your best guy here. He's got to win this duel. He falls away from it. Rops is, of course, boosted up, hoping that somebody rounds this corner. And he does have the bomb carrier just beneath him. And a quick rotate, but Rops gets drawn into the action by the head of the bomb carrier. And that's a bit of a fumble there from young Rops. Rops never loses that duel. Okay, okay. It was a little awkward. Frozen's yeah. behind the door. He's oh. going to get challenged by two. Stiko clears him out of this. This is a very good opening from Mouse Sports, made possible by a toppling of the Ropsicle. Yes, by God's death, of course. Oh. And, well, continuous couple of flashbangs. CTs fall out. God sent using that ramp room to find a first round on the board. There. Five players alive. They're fine to save guns. Oh, punishing the saves would be enormous because not everybody has enough to buy. Keep on the hunt, then. Okay, BMAS will take him down. Four still up. AK saved over. BMAS making a lot of noise, so he will be spotted, but Chris J has the cross. Very important guns here, honestly. Oh, uh, Chris, to get some damage off, but 
Let's look at this next round here. Frozen's going to be able to buy himself. BMAS can drop one. Robs can buy. And Kerrigan will have a gun. So everyone's going to get the, what they want. Apart from Chris. He'll have to settle for the scout. But sometimes that's not really a concession with Chris. So a nice round from Godsent. And again, that awkward battle in those awkward situations, that's where Robs does not falter usually. So a very nice opening kill for my Godsent to take ramp. Early opening for this T side. Let's see what it's got in store for us. Outer play. Send to the top of the silo, sees nothing. Farley's trying to find vision. You know, I called God sent the Dane Slayers because they knocked off so many, actually all of the fully Danish rosters. But uh, you know, they've got a talented Dane in their own. Farley, he was very, very highly touted as an up-and-comer. Found his way into the God sent camp. And yes, before you ask, we know that it means dangerous in Danish. I think every single game I've ever casted with Farley in it, someone's tweeted, Hey, did you know Farley means dangerous in Danish? Whoa, talk about dangerous. Chris J says, What's the line? Okay. Huh? I can't read your lips from this Ralph? far away. Oh. I'm in danger. <laughs> okay. Well, there's an opening. Oh, I, oh, very nice crosshair placement. 2K spray down for Chris. Everyone's getting melted coming out of Squeaky. And this was a hot opening for Godsend. They just falter at the 20-yard line. That angle that's opened up for Kerrigan outside of Hut. I love that voice. Uh, that's opened up here. It gets cleared by Madden, but uh, Kerrigan has shown that he's been sharp and able to keep up with the big dogs. <laughs> when it comes to the aim, too. No sports. Ice them out. God sent. Let's see the rebound. They're in a good position economically to come in with a full buy. Lots of ramp play as a play. I love this camera angle. Emmy? You know, we got some <laughs> whack angles from some of the players. His, we can webcam, his, screen. his webcam is blanking. Emmy, we know you don't cheat, man. Just show us yeah. your face. <laughs> Good frag grenade here, softening up the two pistol players of God sent. Through the squeaky door, that frag flew. Finding its targets like a homing missile. B-Mask gonna perch up on this hut like a gargoyle. You no, know he's always statuesque about it. When he finds his favorite angle, he will sit in place. Nothing can shake him. Kerrigan's trying to float around it. Decent utility presence coming through the squeaky doors. Let's see it, Rops. Your turn again. Shall he be bested? Absolutely. Very crisp headshot coming out of Farley. That's immediately going to move his teammates back down to the B ramp. And this has the same flavor of that one God sent round win. Emmy shutting down Chris J. B Mass taking his place, trying to challenge back from Decon, extending into the site a little as Kerrigan comes in from ramp. They've got God sent isolated over on control, and Kerrigan's gonna take down another body as Frozen sweeps in. He doesn't expect Farley's position, and now B Mass is gonna need a big clutch. He's sitting on top of the no defuse, way. and he sticks it all the way. Talk about a gargoyle. You can't crack him under pressure. What the hell was that? He stuck the bomb out in the open. You can't get mad at Farley. Who would stick that? Who would stick that in good faith? Only BMAS. That's a power move right there. Farley almost plays it to the right speed that he gets in and still is able to hit him on the fourth and a half second. But instead, we don't see that. They falter a little bit once they get in the site. The protocols are there for mouse sports, hitting all the players coming in. That was good but they still lost a couple of key trades. Rops, 0-2 on the ramp. He's getting smoked. Paul smokes up for the Mac 10 users, the SMG abusers. Big round for Godsent. They found hooks in a couple of these rounds. They haven't been able to pull most sports apart. That last one was frantic and a hell of a 1v1. 
Frozen's gonna pop out the window. That gives the audio cue to Godsend. They very quickly start to close that gap. And Arabs, well, he misses the first shot, recovers with the second. Frozen taken off of the ledge. Ooh, and Farley, another crisp headshot from him. Chris J down fence. Removes Zen, Whoa, and Farley, this? he's going to evacuate. He would have been in the middle of the site with that bomb planted in the face of Mouse Sports. Oh. Instead, a redirection. That's beautiful. Okay, let's see how he plays it. He, he knows that they can try to go for the vents. Oh, oh my they're going to come right up. Oh, and that's an easy spray down for the first one. BMAS, half his health gone. They assumed Farley would be occupied with the bomb plant. Another 1v1, but Farley's going to take it. Putting the Dane in dangerous. Damn, dude, this man's sharp. That was such a confident play. Immediately when that smoke goes down, Mouse Sports, they're glued to it. They think it's going to be a lower plant. It's going to be a 1v2 standard. Farley's like, no, give me the high ground advantage. Comes up into heaven as they come up the vents frantically like a bunch of mice trying to sneak around, and he sprays them both down. Gets BMAS down to half HP on the first spray. What a play by Farley to make up for the fact that he had that very disappointing 1v1 loss to BMAS. Yeah, he gets his revenge right after. And because BMAS actually walked away with that round win, well, the economy of mouse sports shatters. Oh yeah. People are stealing toilet paper in the Mouse Sports camp at this point. Emmy gets that kill onto Rocks from the top after coming down low. Chance for Rocks to have won there. The Mass will try to refresh his position lower. Stiko peels back. And we'll have to see what the decision here is for Godsent. We haven't really had a chance to talk about Stiko too much, but we're going to have to. This is a player who's redefined himself. He mentioned it in his interview yesterday. One game of FPL is what kind of turned his career around. Him and Mike Lelly deciding to make a project happen. And, uh, well, Stiko's still here. Uh-oh. Frozen. He's going to find one kill. Speak of the devil. Stiko, the only casualty versus Godsent in round number seven. So the tease to find number three. Seven deep in this tee side. This is a scrappy duel so far. I feel like we're watching a kind of a, a like a boxing match at the moment. Going one round at a time, it's close as can be. Godsend are fighting like hell to stay in this game. And after a couple of strange rounds where they lose, they still show lots of signs of life, confidence, discipline. And that's what we love to love to watch. Again, this map could mean a lot. This would be the sixth map in a row that Godsent win on Nuke. And it would also be another win versus Mouseport specifically on this map. But Mouseports have been a strong Nuke team as well. They've taken huge names on their way here to the DreamHack Masters semifinals. I see a Zeus. I see a Zeus. I want a Zeus. I thought he retired. Oh my god, Rops, where is he standing? Somewhere behind his little box. Gotta try something new. The Rops box. How does Rops have 110 ADR? Some things can't be explained. They're gonna group up outside of the A site, ready to hit headstrong into what they don't know exactly awaits. Are there P250s? Are there nades? One rifle? No. Just a Zeus. And it's still yet to been used. Farley rounds the silos, sees two bodies up top, and well, it's Emmy with a double kill. So making money off the Mac 10, Frozen peppering with the USP. The yeah, I like this idea. Go hide behind. What is this? We'll call it the garage knob. <laughs> One garage knob. Frozen sits behind it. He's gonna pop up. Almost gets a kill with it. Madden doubling down as Godsent tie four rounds. They're a threat. You can't deny it. Tack timeout for Mouse Sports. First of the game. Who would have thought we'd be here? Not us. Frozen had two sub 1.0 maps versus Liquid, but five consecutive maps over 1.2 since then. Okay. Just to, yeah, I want to uh, find out about that. So 
He has been really hot. He's been shooting hot. He's not one of the bigger personalities on the team, and neither is Rops, but Rops still gets more shine because he had so, so much more of kind of a, an infamous come up, yeah. right? That there's so much more luster and allure about his rise to fame. But with Frozen, he kind of had an equally startling rise, which is less of the media attention. Yep. And now we talk about him and like see how well he plays his spots. I watch his demos to learn spots over way more experienced players. He's definitely super solid in his positions and at this tournament has been a very, very consistent fragger. Can we talk about, you know, a part of that new generation that come up in the same pathway of Rops. Chris J takes a path onto the garage knob, dies. Then Emmy comes through smoke into Frozen. You know, we clump guys like Beamass and Brokey alongside the Frozen Rops storyline. Well, Brokey, well, he, while he's found success elsewhere with FaZe, becoming one of their most successful players, most consistent in terms of impact, Mouse Sports gobbled up all the other talented kids of Counter-Strike. Zen, easy entry. Kerrigan gets splattered down here in the B-Halls, and Rops is going to try to find himself a little bit of footing to hang on with. But do Godsent want to take this here and now? They've got 50 seconds on the clock. Two upstairs, one downstairs. They know that Rops is the rotator, and they know BMS and Frozen are going to be up here. So this is their best chance. Doesn't mean they'll win. Rops, it's time to shine. He struggled a couple of times on the ramp. He doesn't find the first kill too cleanly. And an outside lurk is won by Madden. That's a big kill. Frozen was looking for that. Massive frag. If Frozen finds him, then it's a 2v2 for the retake. Instead, it's BMAS, no kit, in a 1v3. We saw two T's exit from the double doors. Nobody clears Rop's position initially. Looked like he was going to be primed for a multi-frag, but instead he only gets the one. I think he's not even deciding to go for this. Yes, I definitely agree. That's where Rops needs to get to. And, uh, of course, the the frozen lurk. That, that makes up for that fact. That's where Madden L lurks him, basically. And that's the tricky part about Frozen's job. We saw versus Cloud9 how, how good he was. At reading somebody like Alex, who just, he is just, he's a hard man to find. He's Jason Bourne on the T side of Nuke when it comes to outside. Off, of, off the cover of this smoke, uh, inside of Mini, wrapping around red. You never know what timing he's going to take unless you're frozen. He's been very good at catching these lurks. And I like that Kerrigan characterized it as a game plan between Chris J and Frozen specifically um, when talking about how good they dealt with Cloud9. Single scout and an M4. All most sports will have as they watch Godsent rack up these T rounds. Theoretically soon to be a two round lead. We'll see. Frozen, I think he does a really good job of playing around these smoke walls, peeking through them at times, tucking into both the cubbies of Mini and the corners of Garage. But he can't do anything to really contest it. Emmy even finding a kill versus Frozen, doing tons of damage, in fact, to both Chris J and Kerrigan. So if they were already working with Little, Emmy didn't want them to have anything at all. Yeah, their odds drop right, way down after that spray, and the CTs will be scared. Chris J, he'll need a lightning fast shot to the head, but he can't find it. Farley wins over on this duel. Kerrigan still low, two players left outside of him. There is quite a stack here towards the upstairs site, at least the one rifle. Will beat, will three mass come into, pr into play is the question. Because he's definitely got a multifaceted attack to deal with on his hands. Two right above him. For now, the timing bodes well if he can just get these quick kills, but Emmy on point. Yeah, Kerrigan finds one off the sidearm, but Rops has been relegated to the dungeons of the B site. And he's not coming up with any treasures. Sixth round for Godsent. Very nice, meticulous squeeze outside, using the walls of smoke, playing it passively, and clumped together. There was a very strong buddy system working through the garage to deal with Chris J. If he was able to get that scout into position a little sooner, maybe he's able to pop off some frags, but he had to go all the way from lobby, through ramp, back into hell. It's uh, so impressive to see a team overcome the CT side of Mouse Sports because I felt like 
Cloud9 made some great adjustments as the half went on, but right now it feels like Godsent are in control of whether or not they win or lose, and how they're approaching their outside lurks, I think it just comes down to this matchup specifically. Like, a lot of the ways these lurks are coming down is like, how prepared are you versus the certain team you're playing, not just how you should play ideally on Nuke, because it's always a gamble whether or not you walk secret or walk through the big garage or walk through the smokes in a mini, but every single time it's Godsent picking the right option. Now that they have the lead, they have to keep the lead. That's Godsense's newest challenge. They're going to be facing off versus the full buy. How does it differ? Well, double op. We've seen some stellar sniper gameplay from Robs as of late. A little too good. Freakishly good. It's been a bit off on his first kill in some of these rounds. It just shows so much when it's a player like Robs. But uh, still, he's putting the numbers up. So it looks like Godsent will forego any outside control, but they'll try to create some suspicion there. Rops is going to have two players approaching, and he finds a great opportunity here on Farley. Doesn't know one's crossed to the left, but he's still got eyes trained on this angle. Not much of a multi-peak versus Rops, so just making sure he remains crisp in the 1v1 engagement. They don't want that smoke. And they've only got one smoke of their own. Vmast and Kerrigan, anchors of the A site. This is a really strong duo when it comes to holding the line. Let's see the offense challenge. One inside of the hut, two exiting from Squeaky. And it's Kerrigan to catch the first one. A second kill for Kerrigan. Zen does take down his teammate. Rops above, strikes the op down. And it's inside of the vents that Stiko knows Frozen's at. But there's too many players to deal with. Stiko, his options so limited. Hmm, 15 seconds. Could he even surmise a plant? It seems incredibly unlikely. They can throw bodies oh. at the problem. He'll have to get the kill. A moment here where he can potentially get one. Oh, Rops is on the back of the site too for some reason. X-Ray had me tricked. I thought he was back in the ramp. So that's one round done here. Godsent, after mouse boards don't die early, Godsent make a rough decision to challenge ramp slowly. They find out that there is a two-op setup in play, and then they come back into an upper exact. That looks pretty flaccid. Yeah, just kind of flopped into the bomb site. Wiggled around a little. Couldn't find a way to make it work. Strong rotates for Mouse Sports to ensure that once they did lose a player, they didn't lose anything further. We've got a oh, vent dive. Nice. Who's down there? What? Wait, was that the what? vent? Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, Chris oh. J's down in vent. He just no-scoped the guy in the vent. And Kerrigan, well, he's going to lock down Hut at least for the opening few moments. Zen takes him back. Chris J, what are you doing? Getting more op kills, apparently. Just like the last round, we've got Stiko outnumbered, outgunned, and with no clear direction as to how to rob away this round. Looks like Mouse Sports, they're going to get back that lead. At least in terms of cutting it away. Six apiece between Godsent and Mouse Sports. Similarly to the way Gambit were facing versus Astralis yesterday. It's not one it's one thing to get the lead. <laughs> that is a matter of holding on to it. That vent dive is the beginning and end of the round, of course. That opening kill stat not working out too well. Kerrigan, 2Ks on the upstairs holds. Well done. Powering up with that all, oh, Godsent will call a timeout. Don't mind the tactic at all. Before this tournament, Godsent and Mouse Sports hadn't met on Nuke since 2017. And all 10 players are different from that game. Wow. So the orgs met, but these players didn't. Oh, wow, wow. That is pretty cool. Can I um, uh -huh. can I petition that position that you've named that Frozen likes on top of the garage? Yeah. I think yeah. we should call it Top Hat. Top Hat? That's Listen, not bad. I know you love Garage Knob. Garage Knob. Garage it, Knob. It sounds way better when I say it. No it's offense. just the garage knob. It's just that it, garage knob. I'm really immature. <laughs> garage <Okay>. knob. <laughs> Top hat will hold the audience. <laughs> what will? It's a good option. It does yeah. look like one now that I think about it. Mm. You thought it looked like <laughs> <laughs> a top hat. <laughs> Kerrigan, the corner killer. 
Why do you keep laughing at me? I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was funny. But right. anyways, here's another layout of smokes outside. I don't. I think this makes a lot of sense for Godsend. Just trying to do something a little bit more standard. Chris J looking for all of the timing. It's a very good thing to do. Trying to damage people as they cross behind the smokes in secret can sometimes be a very important part of the round. There is no information here for, for Mouseport since they didn't challenge in secret and since they didn't get any tags on the cross or see anything from outside that the cross is coming in. Now, people are not throwing those smokes that often um, just because it means one thing, that you've crossed or you have it. Um, in this situation, Frozen is just going to have to hold his nerve. Nice nade. That's really great. I mean, protocols are just perfect. You see the calmness here. It just moves to the next thing. He's already thinking, like, how much time do I have here? Internal and, clock. Yeah. He's actually expect. It looks like he's expecting a rotate back, though. So no one's come down to help him. All eyes on Frozen. Ooh, good recovery. Looked like he was going to initially miss those shots. But he doubles down into them. So the doors belong to Frozen. And Kerrigan, he's going to catch Farley on his hot rotate down through the vents. 15 seconds left. Sen right in front of the doorway. Gets his hands back on his gun. And from there, he's going to have a little fun. Takes the head off Kerrigan. It's a man advantage for Mouseport, sure enough. But Madden, hello! Do you not see Frozen standing on the side of his screen? Frozen, not only locking down those first two kills, but then jumping back out through the window to hold off on the backside. Four kills for Frozen, looking ice cold down here under pressure. That was a, a very crucial recovery, or else the ramp players wouldn't have been able to come help. And a nice little adjustment there for the final third and fourth. What can you say about that one? It's Operation Must Trade. Frozen's alone. They know he was in control. They have two people to peek him. You have to get that kill. A little bit of chip damage. Farley's going to stay scoped in. He is still 12 and 6. Don't you forget about it. But he's met by a smoke, and so God sent. Once Frankie, more, got to slow down. Do you know what his name means in Danish? No. <laughs> Oh, so this is a meme because every time uh, we cast them, people always tweet us the, the meaning of his name. It means dangerous. dangerous. Did I say Swedish? What did I say? In Dan it's Danish. Danish. He's Dan Danish. Dangerous in Danish. Farleg. Yeah. He used to play for Copenhagen Wolves before. Far oh, also oh, Swedish. Farley. Also Swedish, says producer Axel. Oh, okay. That's cute of you guys, finding something to agree on. <laughs> they both agree on Skoner as well. Sorry, what? Hey, don't Honor? worry. Another story. Connor who? Oh, <laughs> that's a big pickup here. And he, it's open lines. Oh, my God. A, a, an enormous confidence play here from Farley to cross outside. Kerrigan will find his two kills. Another 2K spray down with the AUG. Untraded frags have been haunting mouse Oof. boards. And he's going to get tagged up. So poor Zen, little to work with. They tried to get some eyes outside, and they get caught in the no man's land. Mouse sports, they're taking it back. This is, uh, they go for the open play here, and, uh, and and Kerrigan just activates immediately. I'm always surprised by the second frag that he's getting. He's looking very sharp. He referenced that he has had more time than ever to to practice as an individual yep. since getting Mither on the team to help with preparation. And it shows. It shows. It certainly does. I think he also mentioned they now have a dedicated analyst, but I didn't catch the name. Yeah, so didn't got, want to say anything, but yeah, he's I'm, got, I'm just doing it on the side. He's got two, two players, or rather individuals, behind him. Kerrigan now. Still sitting back at the site. No challenge initially, then those Molotovs rain in. His frag grenades good for half damage on two different players. He's blinded in the corner. Excellent util. Oh, no. And he just dies in the flames of Zen. That could be the opening back in for most sports. I mean, they've got nothing to lose. It's the final round of the half. They've got to play the retake. They have the utility to do so. Dunked on Madden is a frag grenade, but Rops blinded. That's not going to help. Frozen's going to drop his utility, gets peeked out by the doorway, takes a player off the back of the site, and Chris gets nothing because Zen slides one through him. 8-7 the half. Mouse Sports with a mini comeback. Let's see what happens once they swap sides.
resentment flowing down the into the action with Godsent versus Mouse Sports. 14 kills on Kerrigan as he takes to the top of the scoreboard for Mouse. They lead by one. And who leads on the side of Godsent? Well, it's Farley, damn it. As Danes do, he is putting up a fight on Nuke. But Mouse Sports, they're going to take the heat straight to the CTs. An incredibly aggressive jump out from Frozen. Kerrigan trades him immediately. Emmy's going to extend out from heaven. Emmy with a double before Rops finally takes him down. Bomb's been thrown out onto the dirt. Madden trying to dodge behind the box. It's a clean sweep from Godsend as they get themselves an eight. Yes, minimal losses here. Nicely done. Emmy, he's up to 12 on this. And he lives a little bit too long. Oh, the aim gets awkward, <laughs> but you see how he chills. He doesn't spam yeah. his, he doesn't spam his uh, USP at all. While getting shot. I mean, down there at the bottom of your mouse pad, it's not comfortable. You know, you're in T-Rex mode trying to hit these shots. Nobody knows what's down there. Nobody right? DMs on, on Nuke. So this is a, it's a very awkward situation there for Emmy. Very nice for him to get that second kill. Narrow angle for Emmy finds nothing. Mouse ports buy nothing. I think it was a very good first half from Godsend. I don't think it's, this map was ever going to be close, and I think so far they're on the right track. With a pistol and everything, I don't think that means that this is you know everything necessary to have a clean second half by any means. Mouse ports on the T side is something scary, but it was CT side was the most impressive. They are kind of up and down here on T side. MP9, good four, three. One entire magazine. Spitting fire towards the squeaky door. It is Godsend back in the lead. Don't forget they were once here in that first half. But they lost their edge. Frankie, I send you on a mission. What are the list of teams that uh, Godsend have beat on Nuke? I'm on it. Okay. Just to see, because again, we're looking for Godsend here to just prove some crazy stats on Nuke for a team of their caliber in terms of their wins. And as, as, as was mentioned, the Danish layer so far this event. On the right track here, one round up. Nice nade. Oof, great nade. Early damage. They're going to cross with a little bit of a late wall of smokes here. Look at this. Massive gaps going on. My goodness. Madden's already 
evacuated down the vents. He's not alone. We've got the two MP9s ready to rattle off, and Chris J just crouches beneath the SMG. Madden's going to dive back into the site, hoping that that door swung wide, but mm. Chris, low health, knows better. Madden's in an awkward spot with that door open. Uh, he left it open, of course, but yeah, now he has to be aware of it, depending on where he stands. Probably should be anyway, but this damage, it could catch up to Godson. I wouldn't really call this just a pure, you know, one-up man advantage where Mouseport's in a power position. They're low enough that all these guns from Godson are much stronger, and they're definitely going to be playing a little bit differently, a little bit more timidly with the HP they have left over. Steko's got to be careful not to die. 3v5 is where things change, and oh, BMAS! He'll come through with two! That's oh, a big one. Nade. Yep, huge nade, but it actually misses the mark. And Rops, well, he's going to find another kill. Madden from inside of the B site. He's going to get peppered out from Hut. Rops with another double, but BMAS and Rops, those are big 2Ks to take. BMAS coming through mini, taking all of the pressure, all of the defense, and all of the hope from Godsent on A. Yeah, that's so dope. I mean, these are the two kills that mean the most, right? One on Seiko, I believe, and then it looks like Farley in the back. Seiko is just an incidental kill, it looks like. I think he knew Seiko was there based on his teammate calling that from lobby, but a big pickup for um, a performance so far. It's not been too impressive here for BMAS 5 and 10. Not too much action in that first half, so it's not as if he was dying a ton, but uh, now they need him, of course. Now they need him. 9 to 9. The game couldn't be any closer. Similar scenes to what we saw in the first half. Nice confidence win when versus the force up by and Rops. Maybe he couldn't win too many duels holding ramp, but he sure as can taking it. He's going to immediately go down into the B site, pop open some windows, open up some questions for Godsend. How many and how exactly? Are they looking to assault this? Are oh. Godset just going to forfeit the site and yeah. leave this one to the next one? Seems so. They get an exit kill, so that could be the upgrade for the Fomus, and then suddenly it all makes sense. Maybe if they feel like they had enough utility, they would still go for it with sure this late enough. kill. Yeah, no kit either, so yeah, I, I get it. True. No, I get it. That's probably it right there, actually. So, they'll turn tail and run. All it takes is a ramp hit. Sometimes you just get that kill, and yeah, that's why, of course, sometimes it's more important to prioritize just staying alive as long as possible. Stiko gets one peaked, one peaked, one burst peaked here by Rops coming out ramp, and that's all it takes. I have returned from my mission. Okay. It's fairly simple. Uh, out the last 17 times they have played Nuke, that is godsend to clarify. They've won 11 times. They're currently on a hot win streak from DreamHack Masters Winter and the Elisa Invitational being North, Mouse, Astralis, Heroic and Havu. And obviously we, we know Heroic in particular have a very strong Nuke that they're very proud of. Definitely. The Astro Astralis, yeah. Heroic, even Mouse Sports, these are some of the, Those th are the best Nuke in the world right now, seriously. So... No, no sleepers, for sure. Going to be very comfortable, very confident. Then looking to catch a Lurk, and it looks like he might be rewarded here. That's Kerrigan out of the round. Nice awareness here. Oh, nice time strike as well. Oh, they crunched them at the perfect moment. You just saw like the fear in the eyes of Mouse Sports as they were getting hit from both directions through Hut on ramp. Puts Frozen into the clutch. You know, we talked about Kerrigan kind of returning to form and, and really weaponizing this aggressive lurking. Really didn't work out this round as he tried to get through mini. That's interesting. I actually think this is a situation where Mouseports are somewhat prepared for the lobby crunch because they have so many players in here. And it looks like they're executing outside, so Godsend go for lobby control. They run into so many targets, but they just win all of their duels. So that's a scary situation for Mouseports. I don't think they'd be mad at the setup. But they're going to give back the lobby. 45 seconds for Frozen to work. Yeah. B is completely clear for the taking if he goes down ramp. Yeah, you're odd to something. This is definitely not a bad situation. Full kit, full health. And the bomb. It's a healthy amount of time on the clock, considering he's at a position where he can make a move. Looks like he's going to go for the Heaven Duel. Which, which is, is being watched. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's the problem. He doesn't. He has to gamble on one thing, and he'll start to go up. He also has just multiple forces up here to fight with. So let's see oh, how. Oh, but this he goes. dives under Farley. Yeah, just. Oh, and that's gonna. Oh, that's gonna he open up know the. Farley. But he doesn't know Farley. Who's gonna gonna push into the bomb? Okay, Farley. He sacrificed his teammate, but sometimes sacrifices are necessary. He appeases 
the gods and sends Frozen down with a clutch round from him. Just too much to ask from Frozen. In some sense, his position there as a bait on the opposite vent almost works better than if they were both fighting, if they both lost. There's no way he's going to be able to read the second player in the middle of the site and has to score a plant. So again, close as can be, 10 to 10. All the smoke's up early. Kerrigan, audacious plays. <laughs> Molly inside of the vent. That buys so much time because then Kerrigan can actually get down here knowing that the rotate's delayed. Oh, we've got the jiggle crack spot here. And oh, Ooh. we'll take damage. Yeah, we'll Hard dig. Kerrigan challenges. That's going to cost him. That could have been a very important kill. The, the timing changes completely if Stiko... Stiko dying on the ramp early, right, changes the round because you just follow through with it. If Stiko dies here again in this position, that's another one where you just, just barrel through into the B site. So, very critical that he stays alive. Actually makes sense, you know, why Kerrigan just fights through there. Well, Stiku expects this, though. He's already low on HP. Uh-oh. Strong following frag as well from Stiku. So he's done his job and then some takes another player with him and gets an easy reposition into the B site. We've got Madden laying down ROPs. That one unfolds over on the ramp room with two points of health. The difference, Stiku! Just sidelines, Chris J. Yo! Stiko. Let's get some tractors in chat. That was super sick. And that's after taking being taken down to such low HP off the first kill. Chased down by Kerrigan. Again, if he dies, they just run through. Kerrigan, he has a heyday. He'll get control of everything. Instead, he falls back, plays a headshot, he free fires here for that kill, and then completely destroys BMAS. Beautiful stuff at every turn. Yep. Deals with the pressure of Kerrigan running through the fire. Two very crisp kills in the second and last one. Playing a devilish angle through the decon door. We've got Mouse Sports back on pistols. A very real chance for Godsent to put some distance Shut between up. them. Quick shout out to Stiko's YouTube channel. He's been uploading videos of him playing games with a camera behind him in real life. So you can watch the full POV from his screen while he's talking and watch his arm movements all at the same time. And he cuts it up with uh, music and everything. Wow. So it's an easy watch. It's super fun. If you want to watch uh, a pro play CS, go check his Twitter. Real savant. There's something special about watching someone from behind their monitor. It feels different than actually just watching a demo. Feels like you're right there with them. Well, when we cut to Emmy, Emmy's actually doing that right now. Yeah, but we said, Emmy, we know you don't cheat, man. Put the camera in front of you. Just wants to make sure everybody realizes this is no fluke. Frozen sliding down and trading out that initial kill. Madden, he's going to be focused on Squeaky Door, but offset crosshair because Chris J comes in from Squeaky with a P250. Frozen's already tagged to 31. He's got Stiko right above him. This would be a miracle. And that doesn't happen every day. Stiko executes the latter player. Godsent take their 12th. And we've got Mouse Sports back with a bye. Damn. Full control. Another attempt here for Mouse Sports. And again, it's like the only thing about Mouse Sports, it just, there's sometimes it's chaotic, sometimes it's not. And it just, I guess it depends who gels with what style. But. Sometimes their game plan can be hard to read, and maybe it's hard to figure out what goes well and what doesn't. That's what I would wonder for Mouse Sports um, with how they change up, because they don't really participate in like actively in conditioning quite as much as some other teams. Sometimes it feels like they just throw stuff at the wall based on really strong reads. And right now, Godsent are appearing to be in control of that chaos with these defaults. And it looks like Farley, yeah, he knows. Oh my God. That was, he was like a blue bear up there, okay? Tiny little dot, a speck on the radar. Just gets smushed. A hair, a hairline fracture. So it's gonna be challenged and succeeds in shutting down Kerrigan. Two versus five now, coming out of the gun round from Mouse Sports. Farley is a step above and beyond at the moment. Very, very surgical precision. Scalped a man. Sewed him right back up so he could do it again next round. Madden 
He's going to find one through the hut peak. Rops 1v5. Who do you think you are? Floppy? He's in the same spot. Oh, but Emmy's not scared at all. He's been good, man. Emmy has been very, very good uh, overall. Keeping up with the best of them. 18 kills so far in the game. Farley, though. Some of these key kills. A 1v2 to his name. Pops the blueberry on top of Mini. Sick stuff. No sports relegated back into the pistols yet again. Oh, they're broke. We could be looking at a godsend map one win. Don't call it a comeback. A That's very tough. impressive record already on this map specifically. With the most sports win already. Let's see if Emmy is going to be challenged. Lines up a bunch of bodies. Madden with the 3K and a helping hand to close out the 14th from Godsend. Godsend are on 14. It is two tack pauses left for Mouse Sports. They'll have to dig deep. Things are not firing off right now in their defaults. They're getting picked apart very easily and the upper explodes don't work. I think Mouse Sports need to try to focus on getting lower and going for vent dives and thinking about ramp upper and these outside lurks wrapping around mini are not looking too hot. It means dangerous, by the way. Yep, Farlig. <laughs> Godsend's highest rated player is the 20th highest rated in the tournament. Mouse had three players higher than Farlig, and I'm guessing they are Rops, Frozen, and Beamass. That would make sense. Yeah, although Chris J is, he's had some very good rates. Kerrigan, Kerrigan, too. Well. Er mm. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to read right now. Yeah, very hard one. Really Just for this tournament, it's hard, yeah. Beamass has had some many great openings. I would have thought yeah. he was one of them. Crazy that the ratings are so low for Godsend, and yet here they are in the semifinals. A hippity hop through the squeaky door, and Rops got himself two kills. He's gonna get shut down by Zen. Madden hot on the flank from Ram. And oh. that Molotov is gonna deny Frozen, but we've already got the bomb plant downstairs. Chris J giving cover. Frozen is not a part of the equation, but he does delay Madden for the moment. Frozen stays honed in on this and dies. Now they have to contemplate the retake. This is a specific strat, actually. They and bail. Now they've used this a few times. I've seen uh, what Mel Sports do here is they're taking lower, but they're using Rob specifically to entry upstairs. The last time this happened, I thought that Rob's missed the vent dive, which I should have assumed it's not like him, and was able to just find the entries. But here he's specifically going into mini to get kills and fight, so it takes attention away from upstairs. And of course, Rops is just so damn strong, he can actually get two kills some of the time. So a very strong round here for Mouseport. It's a nice pocket strat from them. I'm sure this isn't the first time Godsend have seen it, but I don't know if they've had success versus it. The weird part is, you know, it seems like maybe a bit of a gimmick to see how he, he entry paths here with the flash from Frozen and the second one on Rob, on Frozen, is on Kerrigan and Frozen, excuse me. That's really cool. So they'll immediately call a timeout. I would be battling with the idea of incorporating another vent dive type strat and wondering, I, what, could they even try the same thing twice? I think it's something you wouldn't want to do necessarily, but could work. Sneaker and Frozen have both played for no chance. Mouse Sports and Slovakia during WESG, but never at the same time. No oh. chance was the Orglis roster that basically got bought by Godson. Oh, that's really cool. I didn't know, I didn't know that. They're like Eskimo bros. Yeah. <laughs> so three round difference here. And Mouse Sports, they've not got too many options. But um, I think they have, in general, the idea of going lower is something that should be appealing. Upstairs has been pretty solid so far. This is a bit more presence outside than what we've seen in recent rounds. How many players are they looking to slip beyond the red box? Right now there's two on the forefront and a third with that bomb, Rops. He just got down into Zen's waiting hands. That's a huge kill to get so early on with zero damage back the other way. And obviously because of that wall of smoke, they're going to be on high alert. But don't forget, Chris still has Bomb behind Red Box. Nico, he's going to peek up, dies. A little bit of, oh, I thought Haphazard running from Frozen because he was just sprinting in, but he still gets his gun up to deny that vent peek. Now Madden inside of Lobby, catching Kerrigan. And they're going to think to themselves, is that the only late lurk? There's... 
Oh, yeah, the bomb is so late here, man. Very awkward situation. Emmy gets comfortable in the vent. He's going to hear a player running by, but Chris J cannot hold this angle. So this is a position to move in. Shot oh. goes in. Farley now, one on three situation. He'll have to try to defend against this if he wants to, but he's got an up and they have a lead, so he won't try. He's going to get that audio confirmation. Bomb being planted on A. Could have taken to the heavens, and Mouse Sports are going to know it. But when we think of the economy on the line from Godsent, the fact that they're starting to let Mouse Sports get into this. Yeah, he's just going to have to forfeit this round. A 12th for Mouse Sports. Very crucial moments, I would say, for Mouse Sports, where nobody would have been surprised if Frozen dies to the player in Vent when he's running out. He had his knife out for a moment before he swapped back to the gun. Sometimes. And the same can be said for Chris J. When he went to the double doors, there was some kind of engagement over on ramp that had him slow down, and it looked like Emmy was just going to stuff that barrel to the back of his head. He gets 180 by Chris J. And then Mouse Sports take things from there. I think he's his own feet as bait there. It was a good awareness from Chris J, but it was a very it wouldn't have been a weird situation if Mouse Sports lost. It would have looked like a mistake to have that bomb come up late. From Godsend, even though the plants are going down in the middle of the round when the execute comes out, there's always these couple of lurks that get caught off guard. Um, Sticko is a val valuable target downstairs as well, and I think Chris sets himself up to find that opening. But um, yeah, they are shaving down numbers. Sometimes like a hot start, instantly 3v3 because of God sense awareness of alert. Ooh, Stiko not gonna come out on top of that fight. That's not comfy at all. Not very huga. See if Robs continues to keep up that pressure. Smoke soon to fade, and there is not a second player in position on ramp. More spam damage favoring Mouse Sports rather than godsend. It is still the 5v5. And that save afforded them so much utility. Everybody came into this round from godsend with a full belt. And if they had lost two players early like that, just to some random spam, then oh, it could have been a tough position. Kerrigan, he's going to take the front of Hut. Emmy tucked in close left with a teammate further back beyond him. The majority of godsend inside the A site. And we've seen Mouse Sports throw that ball of energy in the oh. form of Rops out through Squeaky, but a big pickup from Frozen. I think Farley was getting aggressive from behind the red box, and it gets called out. They're going to push this? Looks like it. Oh, and he's going to have a health advantage. You could just get peaked like this. This is very, very dangerous. Oh my god, and he still doesn't throw it. Kerrigan's oh. going to go for a little bit of a peek. If Kerrigan reloads, he's dead. This is... A an interesting position. Yeah, even that no running held. held. Yeah, that's it. Emmy's just going to pull the pin on this plate. Oh my gosh. Challenge on the go. <gasps> he runs right by on purpose. Three players, three players going down, and Zen, he delivers. His two kills take down the players elsewhere. Now, Emmy is in the playmaker position. And while he doesn't have a kit, he's got the flash and the element of surprise. He catches Robs on top of the site. And now the question is where did B Mask go? Because Chris J's back site, they know that someone had to plant. And he's going to dodge that first op shot. Has to make sure he doesn't die here because Zen just doesn't have the health to make this magic happen. Bomb beyond the halfway point already. And Zen, well, maybe once he swings this door wide, he could just topple Chris J. Easy pickup. And the pressure falls on to BMAS. He is 8 and 15. Bomb tap once. Door swings. He denies the first player. And Emmy's going to close that distance. But it's BMAS to close the round and the lead by at least one. Too little too late as BMAS enters double digits off the 1v2. Nicely played to hold his nerve and open this door from this side. No chance of dying on Zen. Beautiful stuff here from BMAS. Close call. Man, like how the mid-round is played, but Godsent lacking a little bit on the actual retakes. They've been good at catching the lurks, a little bit slow when it comes to those late-round clutch situations. Barnig, lowest kill dash on Nuke this year is minus four with a plus 19, plus 15, and plus 17 on his resume. I think Elliot's a fan. Of course, it had to be a Dane. <laughs> You got Wait, a problem. Within one, no, I'm just jealous. <laughs> Sounds like a problem. Definitely is. Got an issue? Here's a tissue. Here's a tissue. 20 kills between three players on Godsend. Emmy is one of them. Crazy. Talk about getting a chance, being questioned 
about it, and then proving your damn value so quickly. Barley opens up, and it's no easy feat. Winning a duel versus Chris J. Frozen, going to be softened up slightly. Quarter of his health gone to that aerial bombardment on the top of Silo. Already low utility for Godsent. Two incendiaries, single smoke. We'll see if any of that gets used as Mouse Sports throw a wall of smokes of their own. Hmm. This is a true test of uh, Kerrigan here. To not get cut off on the lurks, he's got to be brave about it. Has to assume he can find. There's always a timing. It's always a There's timing. always a timing. Sometimes you won't win, sometimes you will, but here's a risk where it's definitely worth taking in the 4v5. The T's are pressed up, thinking about upstairs, and got Kerrigan it. finds it. I mean, he's going to slip into the lobby. He got away with this oh. last round. Frozen gun up, dies. Two players double back. BMAS finds the headshot, but there's another CT coming. Madden, he's going to peek and also gets denied. This is a huge moment for BMAS because Mouse Sports are looking to keep this game at 14 apiece. And up from Vent comes Zen. Executing BMAS, taking him out of a play where he's already found instrumental impact. 10 seconds left over. Oh, so smart from Kerrigan. Instant HUD control. That's the only safe way to play this plant. Takes the small risk. Zen wraps around, but this opens up Kerrigan to also pushing through. And he's getting that information. But Zen, he's out in front of the hut. He'll get peeked in the side. Robs takes him out. One in the heavens. 1v1 now for Kerrigan. Stiko's going to fall down the wall. Kerrigan swapping over to the squeaky door. He's going to get the kit, and he hits Ooh. it. The headshot is his. Stiko, 15-13 for Godsend. 16-13 in their last result versus Mouse Sports. Just one on the tally for Godsend, and they are doing it again. What a wide swing from Stiko out from the heavens. Dude, talk about timing. So many minute moments. BMAS was absolutely crucial denying that second lobby flank. I thought, Launders, that was the end of it. Before this game, Godson had broken back after losing their pistol rounds six out of ten times. Mm. Damn. Yeah, it's an unfortunate statistic. Nearing 50% is just where most teams land somehow. It's just uh, how it goes, and that's why... That's one thing, that one good thing about uh, the fact that pistols aren't quite as important these days. Um, with not as much emphasis. Buys coming in a little bit more quickly, lots more buys in general but man this is yeah godsend again really looking strong these emmy flanks inside the hut the positioning the game plan it looks super solid for godsend another quick one b is gonna get bogged down by the molotov it's three kills for godsend an utter shutdown on the a site kerrigan one kill back peeks into zen and it's Stiko to close it We've got a match in this first semi-final because it's not the first time God sent Take Nuke off Mouse Sports, but it was this one map win before they lost the reverse sweep in the series. This just got very interesting. It really did. And Godsend have preserved their hot win streak on Nuke. It's now a win streak of seven and it's clearly well deserved. Why? You'll find out after the break. Well, we've just come back from a close match where it almost looked like Godsent were going a little bit shy on their defense. But Stiko, going hard and huge, made his team believe again and achieved to take their map pick of a nuke. That was such a solid start from Godsent on that T side, even though the scoreline was 7-8. They clearly had the read of how Mouse wanted to control things and they just didn't let them. It, it was just such a respectable match and you could tell that they had so much history here and that they were very well prepared for each other. But uh, Mouse Sports were definitely the worst team in the second half. Like they, Godsent definitely showed to, that they impressed and they used Emmy in a way that was awesome. Like would Crystal make plays like that? 
maybe not. Like, he wouldn't be able to get those kills. He wouldn't put himself in a position to get frags like that. Emmy showed up so hard this game. A huge reason why they're able to win. I really thought that Mouseports, after some game plan and preparation, would be able to pull back this nuke win streak. And it hurts their own. This is a map that they're also showing really, really strong results on. And Scorners, that teamwork was so great from Godsend. There was always a buddy system. Yeah. They always knew what to do, even if they lost the opening jewels as well. What did you think in terms of the team play? Who was the stronger team? Uh, I got to give it to Godsend. At least towards the end of the uh, second half, right? We saw those proactive plays into the lobby. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Um, but it gave them enough, I would say, of a game plan and of, uh, of a strategy to at least tether off of one another. And when they tethered off of one another, somebody always picked it up big, right? I mean, I, I agree with you. Crystal would not have been making the same moves Emmy did. He, he took the brunt of the damage by trying to push through Hut, and he didn't do it once or twice. It was a consistent effort on that CT side and it worked. That's the interesting thing though because Crystal was known for kind of jumping around corners and getting in harm's way and sacrificing himself for the team for information not necessarily getting the opening jewels but Emmy, he went five for three in opening jewels. Yeah. And Farlig was was four for two. Zen was four for three. These boys can all get it done. I mean, Farlig's aim was insane. Literally, it was. It was incredible. The offing was there. He's also such a consistent feature of the lineup ever since he's come onto the team. I mean, huge reason why they've had an uptick in performances. And um, everyone contributed on TT side. There's not one name. Like, there was a round for everybody. The cool part was some of these were 3v5s. Like, it was like coming out upper and then getting two entries, but the immediate answer backs to make it not feel quite like a 3v5 for Godsent, where they're able to figure out where Kerrigan was lurking a lot of the time and then find another kill on the other side of the map before the retakes. That's interesting because Steko did send out a tweet about not losing 2v5s this time. So we didn't see, I guess, as many 2v5s as, as 3v5s, but he certainly was good on his word. Uh, something interesting that you mentioned there, oh, brilliant to see the scoreboard as well, but I, I do want to ask you this, Launders. You were mentioning in the cast that Mouse's default style, it wasn't working. They didn't seem to know which kind of mouse they wanted to be. I, I don't, yeah. I, I mean, I'd like to, maybe if we get the interview later, we can, you know, ask about this because of what Kerrigan said about their style of play. But it feels like because they kind of just switch up almost seemingly random based on their read of the situation. It's hard to see, like, I think for them, it might be hard to see what the best solution is or what the missing solution is when they just change up their style constantly round to round. Like, it doesn't feel like a team that conditions extremely hard. Though, I'm sure they would argue against that. I, I feel like not like other teams. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens on Mirage because this used to be Godsense Permaban. They've only recently reintroduced it into their map pool. So I think we should head to a break. And when we come back, we'll be finding out if Godsense can make this a 2-0.